Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you might be located. And thank you so much for joining me today for our live presentation on the U.S. National Parks by Rail with Amtrak Vacations. I will be your host today. My name is Colleen McCarthy, and I appreciate you all joining me this afternoon. Uh, I have had the very good fortune to be with Amtrak Vacations for just about the last eight years, and I've uh, been very lucky to visit some of the incredible national parks that we are going to visit today. Uh, so if you do have any questions, whether it's about the parks, how you get there by rail, what it's like on board the trains, or anything else, please do feel free to chat those questions away at any time throughout the uh, broadcast. Go ahead and pop them right there in your questions box. I can see we've got a couple already, so that's fantastic. I'll go ahead and type those questions away at any time. If I don't have a chance to answer yours live on the broadcast, I will make sure that somebody from the team does reach out to you to get you the answers that you need. Uh, now, just a little bit about what's in store for you this afternoon. Uh, today, of course, our main topic is visiting the national parks by rail, how you can reach uh, the various national parks by Amtrak, uh, and what you can see when you get there, what there is to see and do uh, in those national parks. We'll look at how you can combine multiple parks in one vacation. We'll have a little check-in with the sleeping accommodations on board the train, have a peek into the roomettes and bedrooms, those different types of private uh, rooms on board the train, see what they look like. We've got a lot of great photos of those coming up. And we'll have a brief chat about how Amtrak is providing a safe environment in these times. Now, if you've been on one of these uh, presentations before, bear with me for a moment, but I know we have a lot of new folks attending today. So I do like to start out all of these presentations with a quick look at our Amtrak vacation system map. Uh, as you can see, the USA and up into Canada is incredibly well connected by train. You can actually visit 46 out of the 48 continuous United States by train. And one of the two states uh, that Amtrak doesn't visit here in the continental US is Wyoming. But we do have some great vacations up to Yellowstone National Park, which we'll see coming up in just a few minutes here. So with Amtrak vacations, you can actually visit 47 out of the 48 continuous United States. Now Amtrak does have over 500 stations across the USA and up into Canada. And what that means is that it's very easy to start any of these trips from your hometown, from your backyard, if you will. Uh, you do not have to live in a major city like Chicago or Los Angeles. Uh, several of the vacations we'll look at today do start in those major cities just because they're popular departure points, but absolutely you do not need to live in Chicago to take an Amtrak vacation. Uh, it's very easy to connect you from your hometown. Most of our connections are same day, same station connections, which makes it very easy. You get off one train, you've got a little bit of a cushion so that you're not rushing from point A to point B. You can relax, grab a bite to eat or a cup of coffee maybe, and then head on to your next train right within the same station. Now, if you are changing stations, uh, changing trains in a station. Uh, you don't have to worry about your luggage either because if you check it in at your departure point, it will be transferred from uh, one train to the next for you. You won't see it again until you arrive at your destination. So we make that nice and smooth for you as well. And you may actually already live on a major Amtrak line and not even know it. Uh, for you folks up in Milwaukee, you're already on the Empire Builder. You can head out to Glacier National Park quite easily. Uh, folks down in Santa Fe or Albuquerque, you're right there uh, with the Southwest Chief. You can hop on over to the Grand Canyon uh, very quickly. And if you're not already on a major line, as I said, it's quite easy to connect you through to one. So just ask us or your local travel agent, uh, give us a call and uh, ask about starting any of these trips here from your hometown. Now, of course, the uh, bulk of our topic today is the national parks and with Amtrak you can really step off of the train right into those beautiful wide open spaces of our U.S. national parks and probably the very best example of this uh, is Glacier National Park. Now Glacier National Park is located up in Montana uh, for those of you that aren't too familiar with it. Uh, it's absolutely stunning and beautiful park uh, known for its uh, forests, its lush valleys, its stunning alpine scenery, snow-capped peaks, uh, glacially carved lakes. Of course, it is best known for its glaciers. There are 26 glaciers in Glacier National Park. 
on this trip here that we're going to look at uh, just to illustrate how easy it is to get to the park from the train. Uh, we're going to look at here Glacier National Park from Seattle. So this is a round trip journey from Seattle. Uh, it's one overnight train on the Empire Builder out to Glacier National Park. You spend three nights in the park and we've got some great sightseeing included for you. We'll talk about that uh, just a moment. And then it's one more overnight on the Empire Builder train from Glacier back to Seattle. Uh, now Amtrak's Empire Builder train is pretty famous route. It actually goes from Seattle uh, or Portland, Oregon. If you're closer to the Portland area, you can hop on in Portland. Uh, it goes from Seattle and Portland uh, up to Spokane, Washington. So it's two trains to start out, one from Seattle, one from Portland. They meet up in Spokane. Uh, they connect together at that point, and then they continue on all the way to Chicago. Uh, so all the way cross country to Chicago, and they stop in Glacier National Park along the way. Uh, the scenery on the Empire Builder is really quite lovely. When you're leaving the Pacific Northwest, you're going through the Cascade Mountain Range. So you've got the towering uh, pine trees and kind of rushing rivers uh, in the Cascades. And then you can come on through uh, to the Northern Rocky Mountains uh, in Glacier National Park. Uh, now the train actually stops right there at Glacier National Park. This photograph of the Glacier National Park Lodge is actually taken from the train station. So you can see just how close the train station is to the hotel where you're going to be spending your three days in Glacier National Park. Now this beautiful Glacier Park Lodge is actually over 100 years old. It was built by the Great Northern Railway uh, folks uh, back at the turn of the century. As, because Glacier National Park was the crown jewel, the highlight of the beautiful Empire Builder Line, uh, which connected Chicago uh, out to Seattle. Uh, so they really were trying to encourage folks to visit our national parks. Uh, the lodge itself is spectacular. When you first enter uh, the lobby of the lodge, it's got massive towering 40 foot tall uh, pillars, trees that were carved, uh, you know, hand cut in Glacier Park and carved and uh, used to build the lodge there. They've got a great big massive stone fireplace. They've got a piano where people will often play in the evening, beautiful restaurant there, uh, a little shop and things like that um, for you to stay in the lodge. So you're staying right inside the National Park at Glacier Park Lodge. Uh, now, as I mentioned, it is only about 206 steps from the train station to the front door of the lodge itself. Uh, one of my colleagues and friends is out there last year and measured it out for us. So it's about 206 steps. But if you did have any concerns about your mobility, uh, when the train arrives, it's typical for the folks from the lodge to drive their little golf carts down to the train uh, depot and meet the guests. So if you do need help uh, getting back up to the lodge or you need assistance with your luggage, you can hop on the golf cart and they can give you a quick lift up to the front door. Now we do have you there in Glacier National Park for three nights. That is typical in all of our Glacier Park vacations. Usually it's two or three nights that we have you stay in the park because we've got two fantastic sightseeing opportunities for you. Now the first uh, sightseeing opportunity is our two Medicine Valley Lake Cruise. This is included with pretty much all of our Glacier National Park trips. Uh, Glacier National Park, uh, as I mentioned, is located in the northern Rocky Mountains. It's actually over one million acres in size. Uh, two different mountain ranges actually connect in Glacier National Park, and they have over 130 pristine glacially carved lakes in the region. Uh, so we'll have you take a beautiful boat cruise out on Two Medicine Valley Lake. Now it's super easy to do because we'll have the folks from the boat cruise pick you up actually at the lodge, drive you right out to the lake. You hop on board the historic wooden boat, the Sinipa, uh, and go for your beautiful lake cruise. Now after the cruise, you have some free time in the Two Medicine Valley uh, area. So you can take a guided hike out to the Twin Falls if you want to take a little hike out to the falls and get some great photos. Uh, if you are like me and you're not a big hiker, no worries. You can hang out by the river, uh, sorry, lakeside. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty stunning and spectacular scenery. You can just take a stroll. Uh, and then they will pick you back up there at the lake and bring you right back over to the lodge. And you'll have the whole rest of the day kind of uh, at your leisure for sightseeing or any other activities you wanted to do on your own. And then the following day, you'll take the Big Sky Circle Tour. I uh, know this one also picks up and drops off at the lodge. This is also included with pretty much all of our Glacier National Park trips. Uh, and the reason that we like to include this one is because it is a full day experience. And like the name suggests, you do make one big circle uh, of the park. So you get to see the east side and the west sides of the park. 
Uh, now, the going to this big sky circle tour features the going to the Sun Road, which you'll see in just a minute. Uh, it also features stops at Lake McDonald, Logan Pass, which is right where the Continental Divide is. It's one of the higher elevations that you visit in Glacier National Park. It's almost 7,000 feet above sea level at Logan Pass. Uh, you'll stop at St. Mary's Lake, very famous um, for photos. Uh, many photos that you see of Glacier National Park include St. Mary's Lake and St. Mary's Valley. They'll stop for wildlife viewing. Uh, Glacier National Park actually has over uh, hundreds of species of animals, including mountain goats, which are the emblem of the park, uh, elk, black bear, moose, bighorn sheep, little guys like beavers and marmots. So there's a lot of different wildlife viewing uh, that you can do uh, in Glacier National Park, and we do include some stops for that along this tour. Now the tour itself is uh, in one of these beautiful red uh, jeeps, I guess maybe you'd call them bus, not quite a bus, but it's a, it's a vehicle that was actually designed specifically for the national parks. They had similar ones in Yellowstone that were yellow. Uh, the ones designed for Glacier were painted bright red. Uh, these are actually the restored 1930s originals uh, and they're called jammer buses or jammers. Uh, now the name jammer came from way back in the day in the 30s when they were going up the steep mountain roads. Uh, the drivers would have to dramatically shift gears and it made kind of a jamming sound, I guess. Uh, now we've uh, replaced it with automatic transmission, so that's no longer an issue, but uh, we kept the name for historical purposes. So you'll take this uh, beautiful tour. It's an open top on a nice, beautiful, sunny day like this. They can actually roll the top back, I guess, kind of similar to a Jeep. Uh, so you get some great views of the whole surround. And one of the highlights of the Big Sky Circle Tour is traveling along that Going to the Sun Road. Uh, now the Going to the Sun Road you saw in the previous photo, you have it here as well. Uh, it's quite famous mountain road, windy road through the mountains. Believe me when I tell you, you will be glad that the professional driver is the one driving the <laughs> jammer, that you don't have to navigate this uh, part of it on your own. Now, if this looks a little bit familiar to you, you may recognize it from the beginning of the famous Stanley Kubrick film, The Shining. Uh, actually, if you think about the opening two or three minutes of the film when you see uh, Jack Nicholson's little yellow uh, beetle uh, going through the windy roads and it's got the huge towering pine trees and it's got the snow-capped mountains overlooking the glittering lake, uh, that's actually filmed here in Glacier National Park in Montana. I know the movie's not set in Montana necessarily, but that's where they filmed it because they were just so impressed with the incredible, stunning scenery. Now, I should mention for you folks, Glacier National Park is a seasonal destination. Uh, it's actually only open uh, for about three and a half months. Uh, it opens at the very, very end of May. Uh, and is open until just about the middle of September. Uh, and the reason for that is because they get dozens and dozens of feet of snow up in the northern Rocky Mountains, as you might expect. Uh, this entire mountain road here is snowed in pretty much until the middle to end of May. Uh, so if you are interested in Glacier National Park, I do highly recommend uh, booking as early as possible because as you can imagine with the uh, park only open for about three and a half months, it does uh, fill up pretty quick for those summer months. You can, of course, book that now for next summer or even into 2022 if you're looking for kind of a special occasion trip uh, coming up here in a couple of years. Uh, you can make reservations right now uh, with Amtrak vacations all the way through 2022. Uh, so Glacier National Park, beautiful place to visit. This particular trip here uh, is actually it's five nights, six days. So two nights on board the train, three nights in Glacier National Park. Uh, it includes the Big Sky Circle Tour. It includes the two Medicine Valley boat crews and all of that transportation that we talked about. It includes your round-trip Amtrak accommodations, and it does include a dinner for you on your arrival in Glacier National Park. Uh, and this one here starts at $14.99 per person. Now we'll go from the snowy mountains down to the uh, warm <laughs> desert of the Grand Canyon. Uh, our next look here at the national parks is Grand Canyon National Park. Uh, so we're going to look at this one here, round trip from Chicago, to give you an idea again about how you arrive to the Grand Canyon by train. It is one overnight in either direction. So uh, Chicago out to Arizona is one overnight. So you'll do three nights in Arizona, including one night inside Grand Canyon National Park, and then one overnight on the train back to Chicago. Uh, now do keep in mind that all of these trips here are customizable, so you can easily add extra nights. Let's say you wanna spend two or three nights inside the Grand Canyon. No problem, we can do that for you. 
You can also add extra destinations along the way. Maybe you've always wanted to visit uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. You can stop in Santa Fe along the way out to the Grand Canyon. We can easily accommodate that for you as well. So do keep that in mind. Not only can you start from your hometown, you can customize any of the itineraries to better suit what you'd like to do on your vacation. Of course, it is your bucket list trip that we're trying to plan here for you. Now, this trip here does feature Amtrak's incredible Southwest Chief train. Uh, now, the Southwest Chief uh, departs from Chicago. It does travel all the way through to Los Angeles, so you could easily add Los Angeles on after the Grand Canyon if you wanted to do the entire route. Uh, that's quite easily done. A uh, really lovely scenery on the Southwest Chief. When you start out leaving Chicago, you're going through the Midwest, the breadbasket, right? The plain, the Great Plains. You've got the rolling, beautiful golden fields. And then you start coming into the Southwest uh, and it kind of becomes ranches and missions and pueblos. You've got mountains and deserts, including the Painted Desert in Arizona. Uh, and at one point along your journey, the train is actually going through uh, curving canyon passages where the walls of the canyons are only a few feet wider uh, than the train itself. So it's really some pretty spectacular scenery uh, on this uh, overnight journey from Chicago out to uh, the southwest here, out to Arizona. And the great thing is, too, you kind of are sleeping uh, during the the you know, later Great Plains bits uh, in between uh, before you come out to the desert. So you're really going through the beautiful kind of New Mexico and Arizona scenery all during the daylight. And it's really great because it's scenery that you really can't see uh, any other way in a lot of cases. You're not going to see kind of these beautiful canyon walls and things like that from the interstate highway, right? It's, it's scenery that you can only see kind of cutting through uh, on board the train while somebody else does that driving for you. <laughs> Uh, and what's so great about these Grand Canyon trips is that we make it as easy as possible. Uh, so what will happen is you'll arrive uh, to Flagstaff, Arizona. That's as close as Amtrak will get you to the Grand Canyon. Uh, now, when you get off the train in uh, Flagstaff, we're going to pick you up at the train station. And we're going to bring you over to the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel in Williams, Arizona. Now, Williams, Arizona is a really neat little town. It's actually located right on historic Route 66. So they've got a lot of great Route 66 memorabilia, kind of diners and kitschy shops and things that you can check out while you're there. You do get there a little bit later in the evening on your arrival day. So we have you spend your first night in Arizona uh, there in Williams at the Grand Canyon Railway Hotel. When you wake up the next morning, your breakfast is included for you. And then you're going to hop on this beautiful Grand Canyon Railway train for your journey into the National Park itself. Uh, it's about a two-hour uh, sightseeing train journey. It's got several different classes of service, as you can see, including the beautiful dome car in the photos. Uh, and that's going to take you right inside Grand Canyon National Park itself. Uh, it's a lot of fun because before the train departs, they do like a little Wild West cowboy show. The cowboys... Uh, are fighting the robbers who try and stick up the audience in order to pay for their breakfast at the Depot Cafe, right? Uh, and then actually the cowboys will go ahead and board the train along with you. Uh, they'll play the ukulele and kind of entertain you on your journey up into the national park itself. And if you are traveling next year, uh, we will have a tour available included in the package. So when you arrive at the Grand Canyon, like I say, it brings you right inside Grand Canyon National Park itself. Uh, the tour is not running in 2020, but it'll be back next year. Uh, what'll happen is they'll pick you up at the train depot inside the canyon. You'll go out on a beautiful uh, sightseeing tour. They'll take you to several lookouts like this one, uh, where you can get some really spectacular and incredible photos. Uh, for those of you folks that have not had a chance to visit the Grand Canyon before, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's absolutely truly breathtaking. Uh, the first time I saw it, it genuinely didn't look real. <laughs> I thought that I was looking at like a painted Hollywood backdrop because it just, it stretches on and on, literally takes up the entire horizon. You can't see the end of it in either direction. Uh, it's really incredible. Uh, it's over 277 miles long and 18 miles wide. So it's pretty impressive sight. Uh, and you could genuinely stare at it all day because as the sun moves and the clouds move, the light plays off the different rock striations and it makes all different sort of shadows and images. It's, it's really pretty incredible. Now, after your tour, you're gonna to be dropped off there uh, at your hotel where you're gonna spend the night. Uh, and as I mentioned, you are spending the night right inside the National Park. Uh, so you do have a few choices of the different lodges, the historic National Park lodges where you can stay. 
Uh, one of those choices is the El Tovar, which you can see on the bottom of the screen. You can see exactly how close that is, right, to the rim of the canyon itself. You can actually have an incredible dinner in their dining room and watch the sunset over the canyon. It's pretty special. Uh, now, if you are uh, doing a trip like this to the Grand Canyon, I highly recommend uh, getting up for the sunrise. Uh, trust me, I am not normally an early riser, uh, but I do think it is kind of that once in a lifetime opportunity that you should really uh, take advantage of. And because you're staying inside the National Park, it is super easy for you to do. You can pretty much roll right out of bed and be in your chosen spot to uh, see the sunrise about five minutes or less later. Uh, versus if you were staying outside the park, just think about it, you'd have to pack everybody into the car, drive out to the Grand Canyon, find a place to park, take the shuttle from the parking lot actually over to the rim, uh, and then you'll be behind everybody else that was staying inside the park. So I definitely recommend uh, all of our trips do feature the accommodations inside the National Park just because it's a much uh, more comfortable, convenient experience where you can really maximize your sightseeing. Now the next day uh, after your evening uh, at the lodge, you'll have all morning and afternoon to do some exploring on your own. You could do some hiking. You can also just take some leisurely strolls. As I mentioned previously, I'm not much of a hiker myself, uh, but you can take some strolls on these beautiful well-paved paths that you see in that top right-hand photo out to some pretty spectacular lookout points like that one. And then what will happen is you'll take the Grand Canyon Railway train uh, late that afternoon back down to Williams, Arizona. We include dinner for you there in Williams. You'll spend one more night uh, in Williams, Arizona, and then the next morning we'll bring you back to the Amtrak station for your departure back to Chicago. Uh, so the great thing about this Grand Canyon round trip from Chicago uh, vacation here is that it is all pretty much totally included. Um, you know, all of your train uh, travel, your Grand Canyon Railway train travel, your hotel accommodations, your sightseeing. Uh, a couple meals are included there for you as well, like I mentioned, the breakfast and the dinner. Uh, and this trip here starts uh, at 1119 per person. Now, that is based on two people sharing a room. Uh, if you are traveling, though, as a party of one or two or three, four, five, <laughs> just let us know or let your local travel agent know. Uh, we can easily get you the rates for solo travel or triples or uh, groups of four or five, whatever it might be. Uh, but this here trip uh, starts at 1119 uh, per person based on two people sharing the room. Now that is based on travel in the coach accommodations, so the regular seats on board Amtrak. And the reason that we give you that price uh, based on coach is just because the price of the private rooms, the roomettes and bedrooms, do fluctuate really quite a bit. It really just depends on uh, where you're going and when you're going and when you book and how many other folks have already booked. It can really be quite the puzzle there. But I also know that if I don't give you any kind of uh, estimates on that, it's gonna you're going to assume that they're quite expensive, which is really not always the case. Uh, oftentimes, they can be very affordable, especially when you consider that not only is it your accommodations for the night, right, your own room, your bed, everything like that, all of your meals on board the train are included for you when you do have those private rooms. Uh, so in this case, leaving Chicago, heading out to Arizona, it's four meals on the way out and four meals on the way back, so eight meals altogether for the two nights. Uh, and just to give you an idea, I looked at the first week in April, uh, just to give you a sense if you traveled next spring. Uh, so the first week in April, uh, the roomettes are looking at 150 per person. Uh, and the bedrooms, which are the about double the size of the roomettes, and they do include their own private uh, facilities, private washroom and everything. Uh, the bedroom is right about 315 per person. And that's including both nights and all those meals and everything uh, that you get there. So I just want to let you know it can be quite reasonable uh, when you consider that. Now do keep in mind, as I mentioned before, that all of these trips here are customizable. So you can easily start from your hometown, add on any desti extra destinations or extra nights. You can upgrade to those roomettes and bedrooms. And I've got some great photos of that for you a little bit later on. You also have a wide variety of choices when it comes to things like your hotels. We have three star, four star, and five star options in just about every location. We also have a wide variety of sightseeing tours that you can choose from. So for example, um, if you are gonna be, let's say that Chicago, sorry, um, Glacier Park in Seattle trip. If you are gonna stay in Seattle, uh, we've got some great sightseeing opportunities there in Seattle. You can go up to the top of the Space Needle, 
but if you are afraid of heights, you do not need to go to the top of the Space Needle. We could also send you out to visit Mount Rainier for the day. We've got a great food tour of Pike's Place Market or a cruise on Puget Sound. So uh, quite a lot of different choices available for you on the sightseeing front. We can also add transfers. Maybe if you're going to fly out to Chicago to start out one of these trips and you want to transfer from the airport to your hotel to start out to your vacation, we can certainly assist you with that as well. Our next two parks that we're gonna look at are uh, quite famous here, Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado, and of course, Yosemite National Park in San Francisco is one of our uh, most popular destinations. And this particular vacation does combine up both of those national parks. So uh, starts with two nights in Denver. You take Amtrak's stunning California Zephyr train out to Salt Lake City, where you do two nights. You'll hop back on the California Zephyr to complete your journey out to the West Coast. Uh, drops you off there in San Francisco for two nights. And you do have a wonderful trip out to Yosemite National Park from San Francisco. Uh, so this one here, as I mentioned, starts in Denver. That's your gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. Denver itself is a lot of fun, a lot of fun things to see and do, a lot of great places to eat, uh, especially there in Denver. Uh, but of course, the highlight of your stay in Denver is your trip out to Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, Rocky Mountain National Park, you may not know, is actually one of our nation's highest national parks when it comes to elevation. Uh, the elevation ranges from about 7,860 feet all the way up to over 14,000 feet above sea level uh, when you're sort of at the top of the mountains there. Really makes you feel like you are literally on top of the world. <laughs> Rocky Mountain National Park is known for its evergreen trees, crystal clear lakes, meandering rivers, waterfalls, uh, and the incredibly rich diversity of plant and animal life. Uh, because it actually has such uh, high elevations, it actually has several different um, climate zones. Uh, it actually, in some parts of the park, it's so high up that it's above the tree line, you know, above where uh, the trees would grow. So you've got kind of a really wide variety of plants and animals that you see there while you're visiting Rocky Mountain National Park. Now the trip that we include out to the park is a full day tour. It leaves right from downtown San Fran, uh, not San Francisco, sorry, right from downtown Denver. Uh, it actually picks right up at the Amtrak station in Denver. And typically all of our hotels there in Denver are located within a mile of the Amtrak station. So very easy for you to get back to the station to hop on this full day tour. Uh, one of the things that's so fantastic about this full day tour is your tour guides. Uh, so I've done this one myself. The tour guides are absolutely incredible. Uh, they're all local guides. They've got tons of local knowledge. They visit the national park uh, pretty much every day, right? Uh, they know all the great places to stop and take you to take photos. You get to stop um, at a big, huge, beautiful lake. There's an optional hike on the tour out to a waterfall. And it's really, trust me, I'm not a hiker, but I had no trouble with it. It's a pretty easy walk, honestly, through the woods out to the waterfall. Uh, you visit the top of a mountain uh, and you get the 360 degree panoramic views of all the beautiful mountaintops uh, there in Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, and one of the things that's so spectacular is that you have a really lot of time, ample amount of time uh, at each one of those stops to really kind of take it in and explore. Uh, I've been on a lot of different uh, tours, as you might imagine, and a lot of the times it's just, you know, get out, take a photo, photo get back on the tour uh, vehicle. And that's really not the case here. You really get a, a really good opportunity to explore the park. Uh, they're also great at spotting wildlife. Uh, so there are over 60 species of mammals in Rocky Mountain National Park. Uh, they're probably best known for the bighorn sheep, those guys with the big curly horns, right? Uh, those are kind of the, the mascot of the park, if you will. Uh, but you could also easily see elk and moose, uh, especially if you folks are interested in traveling kind of right now, uh, right out to Rocky Mountain National Park. The fall is the breeding season for the elk. So they come down kind of out of the mountains to the meadows, which makes them a little bit easier to find. Uh, and there you might get a really great opportunity to see them crash their horns together and everything, you know, fighting over their breeding opportunities. Uh, Rocky Mountain National Park is open year round, even though it is in the mountains. So if you did visit in the wintertime, we do still have tours going out there in the wintertime. And that's really pretty special atmosphere because everything is snow covered. Uh, it's really lovely. 
Uh, now, if you visit in the summertime, you will still get to see snow at the tops of those mountain peaks. Because of the elevation, it is still quite snowy uh, up at the top of the mountain peaks. So you'll get some great photos of those, you know, classic uh, snow-capped Rocky Mountains there. And speaking of Rocky Mountains, after your stay in Denver and your visit out to Rocky Mountain National Park, you will board Amtrak's spectacular California Zephyr train, uh, which goes through the Rocky Mountains as you leave Denver. Uh, on your way across to San Francisco. San Francisco is your jumping off point for Yosemite National Park. And of course the city itself is a lot of fun. You can head down to Fisherman's Wharf, get some great seafood, uh, see the great big sea lions all chilling on the <laughs> docks out there. Uh, they've got a great little Italy with sort of El Fresco dining out on the sidewalks and things in San Francisco as well. Uh, but the highlight again of your stay here is your day trip out to Yosemite National Park. Uh, now, with Amtrak Vacations, we have two different ways for you to visit Yosemite National Park. Uh, the first one is the day trip from San Francisco. That's what's included in this package. But definitely keep in mind that if you actually want to stay inside Yosemite National Park, we can easily set that up for you as well. Uh, so we could include the train, which gets you quite close. And then there's a short bus connection from your train station uh, across to Yosemite National Park. So we can easily set up a stay for you right there at the park itself if you wanted to spend a few nights exploring Yosemite. Uh, or if you'd prefer to stay someplace a little bit uh, larger with more things to do in the city itself, the day tour out of San Francisco is a great option. Now those folks will pick you up from your hotel in San Francisco. They'll drive you through the beautiful Sierra Nevadas and then through some wine country on your way out to Yosemite. So the ride out there is actually quite lovely as well. Now, when you arrive in Yosemite, you do have a guided tour, so they'll take you to some pretty spectacular scenic lookouts, uh, and then you have free time to explore the park as well. So, of course, Yosemite is best known for its giant sequoias, soaring granite cliffs like El Capitan and Half Dome, uh, you see in the photo on the right-hand side there. And of course, Yosemite Falls. Uh, now, Yosemite Falls is actually made up of three waterfalls. Uh, and together, they make up one of the tallest waterfalls in the world. Uh, of course, it rushes right down into Yosemite Valley, which is where you're going to have your free time. Uh, now, you can explore the park on your free time. There is typically a shuttle system that'll take you throughout the park. You can also do a quick hike out to the base of the falls. Uh, and of course, keep your eyes peeled for wildlife, uh, a lot of wildlife to be seen in Yosemite, including black bears, uh, coyotes, peregrine falcons, and golden eagles. The California golden eagle uh, makes its home there in Yosemite National Park. Now, Yosemite, if you don't know, is technically our third national park here in the U.S., uh, but it definitely deserves some credit as the first government protected land. Uh, so it was established as a state park, actually, in 1864, uh, and that's really what kicked off the national park kind of movement. Uh, so it's a really fun and, and beautiful place to visit. Now, if you are doing the day tour out of San Francisco, they will pick you up uh, after your free time to explore, and they'll bring you right back to your hotel there in San Francisco. Uh, so this trip here, uh, six nights uh, hotel stay, one night on board the train. Uh, it does include, I didn't mention, but while you're in Salt Lake City, it does include a sightseeing tour of Salt Lake, as well as a dinner uh, at the Roof Restaurant, which is really lovely. You get a beautiful panoramic view of the entire city all lit up at night. Uh, so this trip here is eight days altogether, uh, starts at $17.99 per person. And because you're only overnight for one night on board this trip, the upgrade to the roomettes and bedrooms are quite affordable. Uh, it's $65 per person for the roomette and $230 per person for the bedroom. And I just based that off the first week in June just because that's when I was in <laughs> Rocky Mountains last and it was a really beautiful time to visit. Uh, so just to give you an idea, looking at the first week of June next year, 65 per person for the roomette and 230 per person for the bedroom if you do wanna take that on the overnight journey on the Zephyr from Salt Lake out to uh, San Francisco. And again, that would include all of your meals uh, along that day as well, which is gonna be pretty much three meals included. Now, if you want to combine even more national parks on one vacation, we can do that for you. So this trip here, Grand National Parks with Yellowstone, Yosemite, and the Grand Canyon. Uh, it does feature that beautiful California Zephyr train ride from Chicago out to Salt Lake. From Salt Lake, you pop up to Yellowstone National Park, which we'll see coming right up here. You then get back on board the Zephyr out to San Francisco, where you visit Yosemite National Park. You'll take the beautiful Coast Starlight train down to Los Angeles. 
and then take that Southwest Chief ride back over to the Grand Canyon and then across uh, to Chicago. Now, I just want to touch briefly on the California Zephyr train because it's one of my faves. Uh, the California Zephyr train is such a beautiful train ride uh, because it really has a wide variety of different landscapes that you see in the two days that it'll take you to get across the US. Uh, so from Chicago, when you leave, you're going through that Midwest, again, kind of the rolling, beautiful golden fields of the Great Plains. Uh, you'll then come into Denver, Colorado, and you'll start heading up into the Rocky Mountains. So you've got the beautiful snow-capped granite Rocky Mountains. And then as you come down out of the Rockies, you're really going uh, to start following the Colorado River for hundreds of miles. You can kind of see that in the photo there. That's taken from the dining car looking out uh, at the scenery along the way. You can just barely see the Colorado River peeking through the trees there. Uh, and as you follow the river, it really kind of changes the scenery into these beautiful kind of sandstone cliffs uh, that hug the side of the river. And as you come into Utah on your way into Salt Lake, it really changes again to this beautiful red rock, kind of, kind of typical Utah red rock scenery. Uh, now, once you leave Salt Lake City and head on uh, west, uh, it really kind of flattens out into this beautiful desert kind of scenery as you go through Nevada. And then you hit the Sierra Nevada mountains as you come into California. So again, you've got tall, towering pine trees, mountains, and then you reach the Pacific Ocean in San Francisco. So it's really a stunning journey all along the way. It makes it a pretty special train ride for you. But of course, in between the ride, uh, after your first day, you'll stop in Salt Lake City, which is your gateway to Yellowstone National Park. Uh, now we have two different ways for you to get up to Yellowstone National Park. You can rent a car and drive. We would set that all up for you. That gives you a little bit more freedom, of course, right? And it's a little easier on the social distancing side if you are traveling, uh, especially this fall or this winter. Now, if you don't prefer to drive, if you don't like to drive, don't want to do it on your vacation, no worries. We've got a great shuttle service that'll take you from Salt Lake City right downtown, uh, right up to your hotel in Yellowstone National Park. So very easy uh, for us to set up that shuttle for you as well. So really just up to you and what you like to do uh, on your trips. Of course, Yellowstone National Park is pretty spectacular place to visit. It is our oldest national park. So this is number one, our first national park here in the U.S. It's also our largest national park at over 2 million acres. Uh, just to give you a little bit of perspective on how big that is, you can actually fit the entire state of Rhode Island and the entire state of Delaware inside Yellowstone National Park with room to spare. So just to give you a sense on how big 2 million acres really is. Uh, now this Yellowstone National Park, of course, is best known for its geothermal features like geysers and hot springs. In fact, it has over 300 geysers, which is more than anywhere else on Earth uh, concentrated together. Uh, that, of course, includes Old Faithful Geyser, which goes off uh, right around every 91 minutes or so. Uh, the park rangers joke that you can practically set your watch by the Old Faithful Geyser. It makes it very easy for you to see along your journey. It is one of the highlights of the included sightseeing tour. Uh, so we do include a sightseeing tour of Yellowstone National Park while you're there. Of course, Yellowstone is also known for its waterfalls, its lakes, its canyons and unspoiled forests. And especially more than almost any other park, Yellowstone is probably uh, best known for the wildlife. Of course, you can see the bison uh, like you see in the bottom photo there. It is very common in Yellowstone to stop for a bison traffic jam uh, to let the herd cross the road. You could also see grizzly bears wolves, lynx, foxes, moose, and elk. It actually has the largest concentration of mammals in the lower 48 United States. Uh, now, after your incredible journey to Yellowstone, you'll get back on the California Zephyr, head through that uh, red rock desert scenery up into the Sierra Nevadas and along to San Francisco. Uh, this is a photo quick here of Lombard Street, which is, I think, the steepest street in the U.S. It's certainly the curviest. It's pretty crazy to see the cars try and go up and down. It's a tourist attraction in and of itself. Uh, but of course, your highlight of your stay in San Francisco is that full day journey out to Yosemite National Park. Uh, now, I know we do get questions from folks who do have mobility concerns all the time. So I just wanted to include a photo like this one, just showing how easy the paths are to stroll on. If you do have uh, mobility concerns, you're not going to want to go hiking during your free time. That's no worries. There's a lot of different places you can visit inside the park without having too much uh, mobility concerns.
Now from San Francisco, you'll head down to Los Angeles and change trains there on your way out to the Grand Canyon National Park. Uh, of course, we saw this quite a bit earlier, so I won't repeat myself. I'll save some time to go over what it looks like on board the train that's coming right up here. Uh, but just a quick recap on this Grand National Parks trip, the three park trip with Yellowstone, Yosemite and the Grand Canyon. It's a 13 day itinerary, so pretty much two week journey. Uh, and it starts at 3,049 per person. Uh, but we do actually have a really fantastic limited time offer where you can save up to 300 per couple uh, off this particular vacation. So if you are interested in a trip like this one, when you give us a call or when you call your local travel agent, just go ahead and ask about the limited time offer uh, and you can save 300 per couple or 150 per person if you're traveling solo. Of course, you can still save. Uh, just ask us about that uh, when you call us or your local travel agent. We can make sure we get that discount for you. Uh, now, before we get into what it's like on board the train, I do just want to touch on the extra safety precautions that Amtrak is taking uh, to make sure it's a safe and comfortable environment for yourself and your family. Uh, of course, they have enhanced uh, the training, uh, cleaning protocols, uh, both in the stations and on board the trains. Uh, they have also require facial coverings uh, when you're in any of the public areas. So basically that's the stations, most of the station, uh, and most of the public areas on the train. Uh, now we are going to see the private rooms in just a moment. If you did upgrade to one of the private rooms, uh, you can take off your mask while you're in the privacy comfort of your own room. They are deliberately limiting their bookings. They're reducing the capacity to about 50% uh, capacity uh, just to allow for social distancing on the board. So your uh, party will be seated together, but then there'll be space in between your party and the next party. They are recycling fresh, or sorry, not recycling. They're putting fresh air uh, throughout the train every about four to five minutes. And it is contactless travel, which means that um, your Never going to have to pass anything back and forth uh, between yourself uh, and the conductor uh, or train employee. They'll just scan it with the wand there. Now, I know it is a little bit of an unusual time uh, to be planning a trip uh, right now, especially if you're looking at next year where we don't know when travel restrictions uh, might you know, be lifted or change or things like that. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you uh, here with Amtrak Vacations. So we do have what's called our maximum flexibility offer. So with our maximum flexibility offer, you can make any changes that you need to. So change your travel dates, change your itinerary, even change your destination. Uh, or if you need to, you can cancel the trip right up until five days prior to your departure. Uh, and there will be no change fees and no cancellation penalties. Uh, and that's if you book by the 31st of December. It doesn't matter when you travel, can be next year, can be 2022. If you need to make any changes or cancel the trip, you can do that right up until five days prior to your departure. Now let's have a quick look at what life is like on board the train. Uh, but before we do, I just want to touch on packing for the train since that's such a common question that we get from you folks. Uh, now with Amtrak, you do have a very generous baggage allowance. You can bring two free carry-on bags as well as two checked bags on board with you. Now when you check a bag, it is similar to an airline. You're not going to see it during your journey. So you'll check it in at your uh, origin station, right? Let's say you're getting on the train in Boston and you're headed out to Glacier Park in Montana. You'll check that bag in Boston, but you don't see it again until you arrive at Glacier Park. So what you want to make sure to do is pack everything that you need for your train journey into a carry-on bag. Uh, so you want to make sure that you include your pajamas, right? Your clothes for tomorrow when you're going on an overnight journey, your toothbrush, your charger for your phone, tablet, laptop, uh, of course, you want to bring that phone, tablet, laptop, book, deck of cards, whatever you might want for entertainment. Uh, you can bring your own snacks and drinks, uh, you know, food on board the train. That's no problem. And of course, any medications that you might need, you want to make sure you have with you in your carry-on as well. Now, if you are checking a bag, we do recommend you get there right about one hour prior to departure. Uh, and if you're not checking a bag, about 30 minutes prior to departure is plenty of time. You do not have to be there uh, three hours early like you do with an airplane. 
Now, the coach accommodations on board Amtrak are quite comfortable. So as you can see right off the bat, there is no middle seat. Uh, it's just two seats and then an aisle and then two more seats. So you always have either an aisle or a window. Uh, those windows are great, big, beautiful picture windows. So you can take in that incredible scenery as you go by. The seats do recline back quite a bit. It's about 45 degree angle. So if you have an armchair uh, in your living room, go lean back in the armchair. And that's right about how far the uh, train seats lean back. It's quite a bit more than on an airplane. You also have a nice little foot rest that comes up. Uh, and I do admit to being a little bit on the shorter side myself, but I will tell you from experience, I cannot kick the seat in front of me. So I can guarantee that you will never have a little small child kicking the seat uh, from behind as you so often do when you fly. Um, there's also quite a bit of ample storage for your luggage, uh, both overhead and on the luggage rack at the front of the train car. Uh, now with Coach, you do have access to the cafe where you can buy meals, uh, but all of the food that you purchase on board the train will be purchased out of pocket. It's not included with the Coach, uh, the same way that it's included with the uh, private sleeping accommodations, which we'll see. Uh, you can, of course, bring your own snacks and drinks on board as well, especially if you're going to be on it for a shorter distance. Let's say that trip from Denver to Salt Lake is not an overnight ride. You might choose to do coach for that part of your journey. Uh, you can always bring your own snacks and drinks on board. However, uh, if you are gonna be traveling overnight, we do always recommend that you do look into those private sleeping accommodations. Uh, as you saw, they can be as low as maybe 65 per person for the remit for that one overnight journey uh, from Salt Lake out to San Francisco there. Uh, so definitely keep them in mind. It's just a much more comfortable and convenient way to travel, especially when you are going overnight on board the train. Uh, and there are quite a few perks that come with having the private accommodations as well. Uh, you do get priority boarding, for example, uh, and you have your room assigned to you ahead of time. So it's nice leisurely boarding because everybody knows already where they're going. Uh, with coach, it is first come first seating in a lot of cases. So it can be a little bit more uh, stressful to try and get a good seat, right, uh, when you're kind of rushing down there. So with the private accommodations, you do get that priority boarding uh, experience. You also have a dedicated sleeper car attendant. Uh, your sleeper car attendant, those folks are fantastic. They're some of my favorite people that I've met on any of my journeys across country with Amtrak. They're super friendly, super knowledgeable. Uh, they'll assist you with whatever you might need, including making up your bed. So these are the folks that will make up your beds uh, at night uh, and then they'll turn your beds back into chairs the following morning for you so you don't have to do it yourself. Uh, they'll do that for you. Now that's whether you have a room at or a bedroom, uh, you do have the sleeper car attendant. Uh, now the first uh, type of room to look at here is called the roomette. It's the room that's designed for one or two people. It's the smaller of the two uh, main room types. Uh, during the day, you sit across from each other and you've got that big, beautiful picture window. The seats will fold down into beds at night. So the seats fold down into the bottom bunk and the top bunk folds out from the wall. Uh, now with the roomettes, I recommend that you bring a smaller bag up to the room itself. Uh, so you have a luggage rack when you first board the train. Um, you can leave a larger suitcase on that luggage rack. And then I would bring just a small duffel uh, or small overnight bag up to the roomette uh, with those essentials, the PJs, the toothbrush, the tablet, or the charger, whatever it might be. Uh, any snacks, medication, of course. Uh, and the reason is that you don't have a lot of room for storage in the roomette. Uh, as you can see in the photo here, mostly you're gonna be storing your bag uh, underneath your seats. So you just wanna kind of size your overnight bag accordingly. Uh, now with the roomettes, you've got big heavy curtains that you can draw across to block out the light and for privacy. Of course, the room does lock when you're inside for your comfort and convenience, especially when you're headed off to sleep. Uh, here we have the roomette set up for nighttime. Uh, as I mentioned, it is bunk beds. Now a lot of folks do ask about getting up to that top bunk. Uh, there are two steps to help you get up to the top bunk. You can just about see the first one. Uh, by the gentleman's elbow there, uh, where he's got it resting on the bed. It's blue on the top and gray on the bottom. Uh, so there's two steps like that that you can use. Uh, if you don't really have any mobility impairments, it's not too difficult to get up to the top. Uh, they do also have a little safety net that you can set up if you're concerned about rolling out of the room. Uh, of course, the train does continue to roll along while you're sleeping, which I find quite restful, kind of rocks you to sleep. Uh, but if you were concerned about it, you could set up the little safety net so you don't roll out of the, the bunk. 
Um, now, if you do have two people traveling who both have mobility concerns, uh, if you wanted to have two lower beds, I think the best bet for folks normally is to get two roomettes. You can actually book them right across the hall if you book them early enough and they're available. Uh, and then what'll happen is you can sit together during the day. You can actually sit in whichever roomette has the better scenery, right? Uh, and then at night, you would just fall down the bottom bunk in each roomette, and that would give each person uh, their own bottom bunk to sleep in. Uh, now, if you do want a little bit, oh, with the roomettes, I should mention as well, the facilities are just down the hall. Uh, so with the facilities, uh, there are multiple bathrooms uh, and showers, uh, and you are not sharing them with the entire train car, uh, sorry, the entire train. Uh, you're not even sharing them with everybody on the train that has a roomette. Uh, you're only sharing them with the folks that do have a roomette in your specific sleeper car. Um, and those attendants that we talked about before, those sleeper car attendants, they are responsible for maintaining uh, the cleanliness and tidiness of the restrooms, and they do uh, really a great job. Typically, they're you know really uh, dedicated folks, and they almost have a little competition. Honestly, I've noticed in many cases where they're trying to you know make sure they have the best sleeper car available. Uh, now, I've traveled multiple times uh, on a roomette uh, in Amtrak, and I've never really had any any trouble with the facilities. So typically there's one uh, restroom upstairs. So these are double-decker train cars for the most part. So there's one uh, bathroom upstairs, and then there's about three more downstairs, and there's one um, big shower uh, facility, which has got two kind of rooms to it. It's got a changing room and then the shower. And obviously it's private when you get in there, you lock the little door and you're kind of all on your own. Um, and with the roomettes, there are four roomettes on the bottom uh, and 10 roomettes on the top. So you're not sharing it with a lot of folks. And that's only, obviously, not every roomette uh, may be filled up during your, your stay there. So just to give you some ideas on that. Uh, now, if you do want your own private facilities, uh, you want a bigger space to move around in, uh, I do recommend that you look at the bedroom. The bedroom accommodations on board the train. Uh, are designed for two adults or potentially two adults and one small child. Uh, now you can sit across from each other as these folks are doing. Or you could sit next to each other. It's kind of like a love seat where the, the woman is sitting. I'll show you that in just a moment. There certainly is a little bit more space in the bedrooms for your luggage. There's a storage overhead, as you see right above the gentleman's head there, uh, and also storage underneath that love seat. Now, similar to the roomette, they have the fold-out tray table, so you can eat your meals easily in your bedroom, or you can set up a laptop, uh, watch a movie, things like that. One quick tip I do recommend, uh, if you are going to be traveling on one of the long-distance trains, like the Empire Builder, uh, the California Zephyr, uh, the Wi-Fi is not guaranteed for most of those trains because they're going through mountains and deserts and all kinds of things. Uh, so if you are going to bring a laptop or a tablet, I recommend that you download a few movies or TV shows ahead of time. Uh, download them right to your device there, and then you can watch them at your leisure. There are outlets, of course, in the rooms where you can plug everything in, uh, but the Wi-Fi certainly is a little, uh, certainly not guaranteed. I wouldn't count on having Wi-Fi while you're kind of going through the Rocky Mountains and things like that. One great perk of having the sleepers, though, is that in the big train stations like Chicago, like Los Angeles and Washington, they do have a special lounge area just for sleeper car passengers. And I have found the Wi-Fi in the lounge area to be, to be pretty excellent. So you can always download those movies while you wait for it to be time to uh, board your train in the station. Uh, just another shot of the bedroom here. You can see how easy it is for them to sit side by side. It's quite a bit of space uh, that they have there. Now you can fold up that chair if you're not using it just for a little extra leg room. Uh, and with the bedrooms, as I mentioned, they do have their own private facilities. So they have their own little private uh, washroom, uh, which is also a shower. So you can just about see in the top right hand corner of the picture here, the little latch, uh, that's gonna lead them to their little uh, restroom shower stall. And the way it works is when you're in that little stall and you turn the shower on, you're getting the whole little stall wet. Uh, but as you can see, it's quite separate from the room itself, so you don't have to worry about getting your carpet wet or anything like that. Uh, and it is private just for you in your bedroom, so it makes it really easy to social distance if you want. Uh, you can pretty much get on board in your bedroom and stay there for the entire journey. 
Now, the bedroom uh, is a little bit larger at night as well. The bottom bunk is right about the same size as a twin size bed. Uh, so you could sleep an adult and a child. You can put up to three uh, people in a bedroom if one of them is a child, uh, age 12 or under. So you could always sleep an adult and a child on the bottom bunk and then one more adult on the top bunk. And now with the bedrooms, the top bunk does have a ladder. So you do have a ladder to get up to the top bunk. So it's even a little bit easier than the roomette. Now, if you are traveling as a family of four with two adults and two children, 12 or under, Amtrak does have what's called a family bedroom. Or if you're traveling as a group of four, but they're adults, what you could do is uh, reserve two bedrooms like this one here and actually take out the wall in between them. Uh, and then you've kind of got one great big bedroom suite, uh, which would be able to accommodate four people. Now, of course, Amtrak does have at least one accessible bedroom on all of the overnight trains as well. The accessible room is a little bit larger because it is designed to fit that wheelchair. Uh, it does have its own private washroom, so toilet and sink uh, that is accessible. And then the shower is just outside the hall from the accessible bedroom. Uh, it is shared, but it is accessible, the shower. Uh, and this will fold down into bunk beds at night as well. So it's really designed for one person with mobility issues uh, and their companion. Now, because you have a roomette or bedroom uh, or accessible room, whatever it might be, all of your meals on board the train are included for you. <coughs> Pardon me. So you can choose to have those meals delivered to you right there in your private room if you like. You can order off the full menu and they'll bring it down to you in your room in your designated time. Or let's say maybe you're traveling uh, next year and uh, you want to head down to the dining car. Maybe social distancing is not as much of a concern, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, for next year. Uh, the trains do have a formal dining car where you can head down and order off the menu in the dining car itself if you want to socialize a little bit and meet some other travelers. Uh, you can typically, with traditional dining on board the train, uh, the kitchen is on the lower level and then the dining car is on the top level. Uh, so they will prepare your meals fresh on board the train. You can order that steak medium rare if that's how you like it cooked. Now, I should point out that if you are traveling right now, so if you are traveling this fall, so sort of October, November, up to the 15th of December, they do have a different menu in place for the long distance trains. It's called flexible dining. Uh, it's what they do on the East Coast on the single level trains most of the time. Uh, and it is designed to have less folks interacting with your meal. Um, so they are encouraging you to dine in your room if you are traveling in the next couple months just with social distancing being in effect uh that's encouraged and then they do have this sort of flexible dining menu which is still served to you nice and hot uh there in your room uh but just kind of minimizes the interaction as you can see it's kind of designed to travel right down to your room uh so that is just the case if you are traveling in the next couple months uh, if you're headed out next year we do anticipate the traditional dining will be back after the 15th of December. Now, if anybody in your party qualifies as a child age 12 or under, senior age 65 or older, or active duty or veteran military member, uh, we do have some great discounts. We do also have some great limited time offers. I mentioned the one for the three park trip, Yellowstone, Yosemite, and Grand Canyon, but we do have several more. So give us a call or call your local travel agent uh, to inquire about any of those discounts. Uh, we've got these webinars every week, so if you want a deeper dive into what life is like on board the train, uh, tune in next week, the 20th. And if you're interested in national parks, I highly recommend uh, tuning in on the 27th of October. We actually have a special guest, uh, one of our friends who's from the National Park Service, uh, who's going to join us for the webinar to talk really kind of in depth about the national parks and how you can get there by train. Uh, now, before I get to your questions, I can see we have quite a few, thank you. Uh, before I get to your questions, I do just have a question for you. Uh, and that is, what destination are you interested in? And when are you interested in travel? And the reason I ask that is because we do have these uh, presentations every week uh, and we always wanna keep them fun and interesting for you. So uh, we'd like to ask you what, um, yeah, what uh, destinations you're interested in so we can make sure to include them in upcoming presentations. So you can go ahead and type that away in the questions box if you like and let me know what you want us to feature coming up here. Now I will uh, answer as many questions as we have time for in the next couple minutes, folks. Uh, so 
a couple of folks actually have asked, how fast does the train go? Uh, so that's a really interesting question, and it really depends on which route you're on, um, because they, it can really vary. So over on the East Coast, uh, the Acela train, the high-speed train, uh, for example, that connects up Boston to Washington, D.C., uh, that train has speeds up to 150 miles an hour, so it can go quite fast. Uh, obviously, when you're going through kind of winding mountain ranges in the Colorado Rockies or places like that, uh, it's not going to be going that fast. Um, might be more like 80 miles per hour, uh, something in that range, right? So um, it really can vary, you know, anywhere from 80 to 90 to 100 to 110, <laughs> just depending on where you're traveling through and things like that. Uh, next question here from folks. Uh, what are the dates that the Glacier Park tours are offered? Uh, so great question. So as I mentioned, Glacier Park is seasonal. So most of our trips out to Glacier do start up pretty much at the very beginning of June. Uh, and then the trips do wrap up pretty much in the middle of September. Uh, so the most popular time to visit is the end of June kind of through August, uh, because that's when everything is open. So you can go to Glacier, let's say, probably the 5th of June, you could go out to Glacier, but the Big Sky Circle Tour would not be running yet. So if you want to make sure that you're doing the boat cruise and the Big Sky Circle Tour, I recommend pretty much end of June uh, through to the very beginning of September. So kind of that you know, two and a half month span there. A uh, great question here from uh, Colin. Uh, so Colin would like to know how long is the two medicine uh, lake cruise that you do? So it's a half day all together, Colin. You'll get picked up uh, in the morning and brought out to the lake. Uh, you'll go on the boat cruise, which I believe is right about an hour, the cruise itself. Um, and then you've got free time in that area. Uh, like I said, you could do the optional guided hike out to the falls, or you could relax by the lakeside. Uh, and then you'll be brought back to the to the lodge. So it's about a half a day all together. Um, but the cruise itself is about an hour, I believe. A uh, great question here from Ronald, who'd like to know uh, how long is it from Chicago out to the Grand Canyon? So great question, Ronald. So the train will leave Chicago in the afternoon. It's right around three o'clock in the afternoon. Now you'll get dinner on board the train if you do have one of the roomettes or bedrooms that's included for you. Uh, the next day you'll get breakfast uh, and lunch and I believe dinner, yeah, you'll get dinner on board the train as well. You get into Arizona right around eight o'clock in the evening the following day. So you pretty much have one full day on board uh, the train and you're going through some really spectacular uh, scenery along that full day. Uh, and you do have the four meals that are included for you if you do have the roomette or the bedroom. All right, great question here uh, from Susan. Uh, Susan would like to know uh, if you can get vegetarian meals uh, in the dining car. Uh, no worries, Susan, you do not have to have steak. Uh, so Amtrak will always have vegetarian options available. Uh, if you have any other dietary restrictions like um, uh, low carb or low sodium or things like that, you would just want to speak to the dining car attendant or to your sleeper car attendant if you're ordering the meal uh, to get delivered to your room. You would just want to speak to them about what the different options are, uh, particularly if you folks are looking at travel uh, next year and you're going to be going down to the full dining car uh, and you're you know, having the, the traditional meals made on board the train. Uh, they are made right there on board the train, so they can often make substitutions or you know, uh, let you know leave off the bread on the cheeseburger or whatever it is, right? Um, so yeah, great questions, everybody. I do know that we have quite a few more, but unfortunately I am already over my time limit here. So I really appreciate you joining me this afternoon. I do promise we will reach out and answer all of the other questions uh, for you folks by email. Uh, so once again, thank you so much for joining me. You folks have a great rest of your day. I uh, hope you have a fantastic afternoon. Thank you again.